Assalamu alaikum. Hey everyone. Welcome back to our third and final part on our video series about how to evaluate a diagnostic test. It's time we met our final match, likelihood ratio. All right, so if you look up its definition, you'll probably be left more confused because, well, it's a mouthful. So likelihood ratio is the likelihood that a given test result would be expected in a patient with the target disorder compared to the likelihood that the same result would be expected in a patient without the target disorder. But let's say we have a particular test that detects iron deficiency anemia. And after all the calculations, don't worry, we'll go over them soon in this video, we have a positive likelihood ratio of 20. What does that 20 mean? Well, that 20 means that person that just got the positive is 20 times more likely to have iron deficiency than someone who does not have the disease. Remember, we're always comparing to someone who does not have the disease. If our negative likelihood ratio in the same example was 0.1, this means that person that just got the negative is 0.1 times likely to develop the disease. So this should make intuitive sense. Getting a positive obviously ups your chances of disease and vice versa, assuming the test sensitivity and specificity are adequate. So with that theory in your mind, how do we calculate it? What's the formula? Well, here you are, and you're just going to have to memorize them, but here are two tips to recall them if you're in an exam. One, sensitivity is always in the numerator and specificity is always in the denominator. Two, to remember where the one minus goes, just remember what's on top. If it's positive likelihood ratio, positive is on top, and the one minus goes to the denominator. If it's negative likelihood ratio, the negative goes on top, so the one minus is in the numerator. All right, with all of this, you should be able to calculate and understand the meaning of likelihood ratio. But to take it a few steps further, we need to have a quick talk about probability and odds. Let's show an example to explain each of them. Suppose we toss a coin twice. What is the probability of getting two heads in a row? What are the odds of getting two heads in a row? And aren't they the same thing? Well, no, they're distinct, and the best way to highlight that is by writing out all the different possibilities we could get. In other words, our sample space. So here it's going to be heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, and tails, tails. So the probability is a chance of getting a particular event when compared to the total sample space, i.e. the denominator does include two heads in a row. So it should be one out of four. But odds show the likelihood of getting a particular event to happen when compared to all other events, i.e. the denominator does not include two heads in a row. So it should be 1 to 3. But 1 to 3 is so awkward to say, and that's why I left this little note down here. We usually keep the numbers x to 1. We want this form of x to 1, and x represents our odds. So... 1 over 3 to 1 is the exact same as 1 to 3. We just prefer to keep things to 1. All right, so they do have a link between them, and here's how we can convert one to the other. So for odds to probability, you just take the odds and put it over 1 plus odds, and that way you get the probability. For probability to odds, you just take the probability and put it over 1 minus probability, and that way you're going to get the odds. All right, now let's put all of this together to understand how they fit into likelihood ratio. So let's take a really long example, and hopefully this will cement everything. So a new state-of-the-art blood pressure cuff with a sensitivity of 80% and a specificity of 95% was developed. Assume that someone's chance of having blood pressure in the general population who's completely asymptomatic is 20%. So this 20% it's going to be our prevalence. Now, pretest probability is always going to equal prevalence unless if there are any risk factors or symptoms, because risk factors and symptoms up your pretest probability. In this case, just to keep it simple, our pretest probability is exactly equal to our prevalence. All right, so let's go over some calculations. Our positive likelihood ratio is going to be sensitivity over 1 minus specificity. So sensitivity in this case is 80%, so it's going to be 0.8 over 1 minus specificity, which is the opposite of our 95%, so it's going to be 0.05, yielding us a final result of 16. What does the 16 mean? Well, it means if someone got a positive, he is 16 times more likely to develop the disease compared to someone who did not develop the disease. What about our negative likelihood ratio? Well, it's going to be 1 minus sensitivity, so the opposite of our 80%, which is 
going to be 20%, 0.2 in this case, over specificity, which is in this case 95%, and it's going to be 0.95, yielding us a final result of 0.211. Our pretest odds is the same as our pretest probability. You just have to convert it to odds. So it's going to be 0.2, our pretest probability, over 1 minus pretest probability, the opposite of 20%, which is 80%. So it's going to be 0.2 over 0.8, yielding us a final pretest odds of 0.25. Now we can find post test odds by multiplying the positive or negative likelihood ratio to our pretest odds. So our positive post test odds is going to be 0.25, which was our pretest odds, times the positive likelihood ratio, which is 16, yielding us a final positive post test odds of 4. And this 4 means it's 4 to 1. Now we can convert this positive post test odds to something that's easier and more palatable for us to understand, which is positive post test probability. We just take that odd, it's going to be 4 over 1 plus that odds. It's going to be 4 over 4 plus 1, which is 4 over 5, yielding us a final positive post-test probability of 80%. And we can do the exact opposite with negative post-test odds. It's just we take the pre-test odds, which is 0.25, times our negative likelihood ratio, which is 0.211. It's going to yield us 0.0527. And then we just convert it by taking that odds and putting it over 1 plus those odds, yielding us finally 0.05, which is 5%. So what does this 80% positive post-test probability mean? And what does this 5% post-test probability mean? Well, for positive post-test probability, they went from 20% to 80%. They basically upped their chances of having the disease. For negative post-test probability, they went down from 20% down back to 5%. So they reduced their chances of developing the disease. So this is a pretty good test. Now, it's fairly important to mention that most tests, for them to be considered pretty good, their positive likelihood ratio has to be more than 10, and the negative likelihood ratio has to be less than 0.1. Now, ideally, it would be really good for both of them to satisfy those criteria, but if it's either one, it still indicates a pretty good diagnostic test. By now, you guys should be the masters of likelihood ratio, but to give you the PhD, let's have a little look at the diagram we call the nomogram. Remember all that calculation we did in the previous slide? Well, this nomogram eliminates any need for odds. Just plot your points based on your pretest probability and positive and negative likelihood ratios, then connect the pretest probability to each of the two likelihood ratios using lines, and you'll get the exact same post test probability. So let's apply our example. Recall that the positive likelihood ratio was 16, so that's going to be right about here. Our negative likelihood ratio was 0.211, and that's going to be right here. Our pretest probability was 20%, and that's going to be right here. Now, if we plot those lines, you're going to see we're going to get the exact same positive and negative post-test probability of 80% right here and 5% right here, respectively. Now, recall from our last video that prevalence, aka pretest probability in this case, is directly proportional to positive predictive value, but inversely proportional to negative predictive value. Moreover, sensitivity and specificity are stable and are never affected by prevalence. So since likelihood ratio is calculated using sensitivity and specificity, it stands to reason that it too is a stable measurement and is not affected by prevalence, which gives it sort of an edge in its own right. But the reason I wanted to mention this was because we can tie in the positive predictive value and negative predictive value yet again. Notice on the nomogram, with any given positive likelihood ratio, a decreasing pretest probability corresponds to a decreasing post-test probability. Moreover, if you make a 2 by 2 table and calculate positive predictive value and negative predictive value in this example, you're going to find that the positive predictive value is exactly equal to our positive post-test probability. And this should make intuitive sense to you. The negative predictive value should be the exact opposite of our negative post-test probability. And this just further cements the idea of how prevalence affects only positive and negative predictive value, but does not affect sensitivity and specificity. Because as we move the points on our pretest probability, we can move points on our post-test probability, but the points in the middle never, ever, ever change. And with that, we hope you benefited from our three-part video series on how to evaluate a diagnostic test. Consider liking and subscribing, and as always, thanks for watching.